in one way, it's almost a Huck Finn retelling. Yeah, exactly. And and it's a one of those jolly good boys away at private school yeah. books, uh, except it's what would really happen uh, if Huck Finn were Huck Finn, and what, what would really happen if you're what life is really like, I presume, at uh, public school, as they called it, yeah. I guess. Well, I think I actually think it's n not so much a kid's book, although kids can read it perfectly well and seem to like it perfectly well. But I think, I mean, I'm 50, and I think it's there's something really specific about this book, uh, being at a time of life when you're looking back at youth and forward to death. And the narrator is 100, and the boy is 15. So we sort of got, or 16, so we've got that kind of whole gamut of life. So, I mean, I would say it's a middle-aged person's book. But what I've noticed is that middle-aged people are reading it in a s somewhat different way uh, from kids. Let's let's talk about the the basic plot of the book because it's pretty simple on, on one on one level. Yeah, I'm not very good at plots. I'm, all my plots are madly simple, like so simple as to barely exist. But should I tell you what it is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so there's this boy um, who, whom we will call H because his name isn't really revealed till the very end of the book, and I mean it's not a massive secret, but it kind of fits in with um, what happens towards the end. Um, and he's described as not a not an athlete, not a scholar. Uh, he's a bit of a failure of a boy, um, and, and a failure as a boy. Um, and he's, he's um, been kicked out of two boarding schools before. This takes place in 1962 in a kind of bleak part of um, Eastern England. Um, and his father sends him away to a third school, and it's kind of his last chance. And he knows the, the rules, he knows the road, he can do it, but he hates it. And um, he describes it as being, it's, a, it's almost like living in a cage or living in a monastery where you're completely constrained by, by rules and by um, you know, the constraints of, of what boarding school is. And some of those are official rules, but an awful lot of those are unofficial rules. Like but there's something about buttons. And yeah, like, like you know, it, a cer certain people are allowed to have one button open, and certain are allowed to have two buttons open. And you know, the, the way you, way you the way you wear your school cap is um, uh, strictly enforced. Uh, whether you can cross the quad at a certain angle, um, I mean, there are endless things. The the words, the whole vocabulary, is um, you know all coded as well. I didn't get so much into that, at it. but I you know I talked to a few people who. Been in schools. I mean, in certain schools, they're exactly like that now. I mean, Eton is certainly like that. You can only walk on one side of the street if you're, you know, a certain age or a certain uh, form. Um, and so I got really interested in that whole idea of, of this life lived without families, without women, without emotional attachment, really, without love. Um, and then what happens to this boy when he meets? Um, in a way, his polar opposite. So he's he's off running in his phys ed class one day, miserably hating it, cross country along the beach. And he kind of collapses in front of these fishermen's village, um, fishermen's uh, huts, and this boy comes out and just says to him, "What are you doing here?" And he's exactly the opposite of of our main character. He's very very beautiful, and he describes him. The protagonist describes him as having the face that he always wished had looked back at him from a mirror. Um, and so not only is he very beautiful, he's very athletic, he's, uh, he's a natural scholar, he reads a lot, he knows all about history, and he lives completely and utterly without rules. He's fallen through the cracks of society. Um, he, there's a, uh, we, we find out that he lived with his grandmother for a while. His mother ran off, um, but his birth was never registered. Um, and he kind of lives as he might have lived on that same piece of beach uh, a thousand years ago. And the book's original title was Dark Ages, which kind of referred to the fact that that piece of coastline is, was very heavily settled by um, the Anglo-Saxons in the first millennium. And um, this boy Finn lives the way, very much the way the Anglo-Saxons would have lived um, back in the first millennium. And so, you know, there are a lot of different themes. There's the whole gender business of what is a real boy, and um, there's also, you know, freedom, the, the contrast of living without rules but without any attachments as well. Um,
it's kind of a love story between the two boys, but it's not really a homosexual love story. Um, and it also is, is very much about history, you know, about, um, you know, freedoms and the constraints of society and what lies under the ground and how history affects the present. And I think there's probably enough themes for one book, actually. <laughs> The book is What I Was, a novel. I'm speaking with the author Meg Rosoff, and What I Was, published by Doubleday Canada.